You are listening to TF Talk News, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. It's your old buddy, Starscream. I am the new leader of the Decepticon. Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net and follow us on social media channels at tfylp. Ah, I'm feeling refreshed. There's nothing like a good two weeks in the CR chamber to refresh your circuits. Did I miss anything out there in the real world? Oh! Oh! Oh, dear. I guess it's been an eventful few weeks, hasn't it? All real-world upheaval aside, Cybertron has been ablaze with delicious reveals and treasures of the unexpected. Unexpected, that is, unless you've been picking up on my trails of breadcrumbs. Have no fear, my little Hansels and Gretels. We're headed back into the reveal zone for this week's TF Talk News Choose Your Own Adventure. What will it be? Third-party companies on the brink of destruction? Turn to page 86 for more studio series. Or why Kenny Loggins might finally become a Transformers collector. If you remember one thing, if you screw up just this much, you'll be flying a cargo plane full of rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong. Yes, sir. Do not grieve. For now, you yourself can own your very own dead Optimus Prime for the most important moment in Transformers fictional history, the original death of Optimus Prime. The Earthrise leader toy has been produced in Vietnam and has made its way into the hands of a select few. The figure sports a grayscale color scheme and paint job, as well as a redecoed trailer compartment. Of note is the mangled antenna and cracked mouthplate on this Prime's face. All in all, this is a surprising entry into the Earthrise toy line, but what about its release? I was under the impression that this was going to be an SDCC 2020 exclusive, but after seeing the leaked images, it's clear that this is definitely the one and only Amazon exclusive Alternate Alternate Universe Universe Optimus Optimus Prime. Prime. You can tell from the product code printed on the toy that matches the product code on the Amazon listing, E7462. Wah, wah. So you can expect this figure to launch on Amazon Prime Day 2020, whose date is now in limbo due to COVID-19. I'll bet my ascot that we see this figure go up for sale sometime in July, regardless of what happens with Prime Day. The real question for me is what will the official name of this release be? Alternate Universe Optimus Prime seems like it may just be a precursor for a major push on the 35th anniversary of the Transformers the movie, especially with Unicron coming to life in 2021. But more on that later. This is bad comedy. So someone in Vietnam needs to call a plumber because the pipes are leaking. Mamma mia! We received a literal flood of back alley photographic leaks earlier this week, which confirmed a few long standing Earthrise rumors, like Voyager Thrust. Photos of the maroon conehead confirmed some major mold differences in the chest, legs, tail fins, and of course, the wings. It's still unclear how this revision solves the conehead problem, but that area of the figure seems to be completely different than the Starscream toy. There's no sign of his two buddies, but I've already put my money on Thrust being a regular release while Dirge and Ramjet will be a two-pack at Amazon. He has eluded us! We must keep searching! There's plenty more Earthrise where that came from, though. A remolded Voyager Soundwave figure sporting all new paint decos and a bunch of Earth-like parts was also seen. Soundwave has ditched the battle-worn decos of yesteryear and now has a bright yellow chest compartment. Although the alt mode hasn't yet been seen, it doesn't take much to imagine this as an Earth mode Soundwave. Let's just hope he turns into a boombox again and not some sort of, well, whatever he turned into before in Siege. Earthrise Megatron has also entered the final stages of production, as we saw a glimpse of his upcoming Voyager toy in full Earthrise packaging. The sample shown still had that damn battle damage painted all over his legs though, so it's unclear if this is actually how the toy will be when it hits retail shelves. 
the Generation Select's hubcap toy has finally been seen as well. As expected, hubcap is a yellow redeco of Earthrise Cliffjumper and has a brand new head sporting his tried and true orange face. It's not clear if hubcap will sport any major remolding beyond the face, but expect an official announcement of this toy very soon. Behold, Cyclonus, the warrior. There was also a very curious pre-painted sample of Cyclonus that appears to be Voyager-sized and includes a blaster accessory. We also got to see it in alt mode that appears incredibly G1 and looks to match his appearance in the Transformers the Movie from 1986. Most fans have been labeling this as an Earthrise Voyager Cyclonus, but I'd like to give pause for a second and present an alternative speculation. This Cyclonus may be our first look at the aesthetic and feel of the leaked Studio Series 86 toy line discovered even earlier this week due to some Walmart.com database finds. Those finds include an all-you-can-eat Studio Series leak buffet, but we'll start with the biggest question marks first. Studio Series 86 Leader Grimlock WHE was discovered by TFW user Nevermore, and later in the week the listing was updated with a uh, placeholder image of Wheelie writing Grimlock. I wonder who put that there? Hmm. So it's been suggested that this may be a leader-sized toy of Grimlock from the animated movie with his pal Wheelie as an add-on. It was the opinion of this host that people had confused the listing, and it was simply Studio Series number 86, and was some sort of repaint of Grimlock, but then another Studio Series series leak with the number 86 was discovered as well. Deluxe? Nah. So it does seem that Studio Series 86 may indeed be a subline within the toy line as a whole. Exciting! With 1986 being the year of the release of the Transformers the movie, it would make sense to go big and as Hasbro liked to say, celebrate this pinnacle moment for the brand. I myself am very much looking forward to seeing what aesthetic choices are made for these toys since Studio Series seems to rely heavily on screen accuracy and scale across the toy line. Will these figures differ significantly from what we are seeing in the War for Cybertron toy line, or will they be almost interchangeable? When taking a closer look at the Cyclonus scene earlier, one significant omission are 3 and 5 millimeter ports that tend to cover the surface of all War for Cybertron figures. So your guess is as good as mine. Be sure to stay tuned. Oh, but remember that smorgasbord of leaks I told you about? I didn't forget. Essentially, an entire new wave or two of Studio Series toys was found by hunting and pecking in the Walmart.com search bar. No Voyagers have been found yet, but quite a few Leader and Deluxe classes have. It seems Revenge of the Fallen will be getting the lion's share of figures this round. Grindor with Ravage will be a redeco of the Blackout toy, with the small Ravage taking the place of Scorponok, both of which appeared in the second film. The most underappreciated Bayverse Autobot, Jolt, will see a toy, ROTF Sideswipe, which presumably will be the previous toy with the full hardtop on the Corvette, Revenge of the Fallen Bumblebee with Sam, will likely be a redeco of the newest Camaro mold with an inarticulated Sam Witwicky. It's unclear if this will be a regular deluxe pack or some sort of special set like the Charlie and Bumblebee set from the last film. There's more Bumblebee where that came from, though, with a Movie 6 Cybertronian Bumblebee that is likely to be a yellow redeco of the upcoming Cliffjumper toy from the Bumblebee film. And last but not least, although listed as an ROTF toy, Deluxe Dino from Dark of the Moon will finally get a legitimate toy in the USA. Does anyone remember when he was supposed to be Mirage? Dino, report to Bay 23. Maybe Ferrari's marketing department finally decided to play nice. So that's five or six upcoming deluxes, whether you count Studio Series 86 Naw or not. And packing Grindr along with Grimlock and Wheelie seems like a sure bet. If that is in fact the case, then the Studio Series 86 toys will indeed be packed alongside the tried and true regular Studio Series toys. With the lack of any Voyager leaks, it's still hard to pinpoint if that Cyclonus will be a Studio Series 86 toy or a War for Cybertron toy. But I'm going to lean towards it being a Studio Series 86, but don't flame me if my predictions turn out to be wrong this time. There was one final reveal from this week's leaks that I failed to mention, but first I'll have to head into the Danger Zone. At last, I can finally reveal the next figure for the Transformers Generations crossover line, and it's Maverick, a rather large transforming F-14 Tomcat with variable sweep wings meant to tie into the upcoming Top Gun Maverick movie. What 
I know, I know, I know. You all wanted a time-traveling DeLorean, but there isn't a movie to tie to that concept right now. If you haven't figured it out, these crossover toys are meant to be more of marketing tie-ins than a full line of figures. That means tons of red tape and lawyers and all that jazz, so Hasbro tries to find strategic partners that want to capitalize on the crossover and nostalgic possibilities of these one-off toys. Maverick is also close to release, since the leaked images are of the toy in jet mode with full packaging. There is robot artwork that shows Maverick's robot mode, but it's unclear if this is an all-new Transformer, or if it is using another toy as a baseline, perhaps the new Earthrise Seeker mold. Either way, this is going to be a good one, and expected to release sometime this fall since the film is currently set to release on Christmas weekend of 2020. Okay, can we leave the danger zone now? Alright, thanks. I want to make it clear that I still don't condone toy hunting at this time, since there are hundreds of options for safe purchasing of your toys online, but there were some notable on-the-shelf reports this week. The very hard-to-find Studio Series 36 Drift with Dinobot set was discovered on shelf at a Meyer store, so it appears this figure may have actually found his way to regular retail after being a specialty store exclusive. The My Little Prime figure has found a home in Australia as an EB Games exclusive, but it's still unclear if this figure will be exclusive to Amazon or someone else like GameStop here in the USA. You will definitely be able to snag it at Amazon though because there's already a listing, so just hold your horses. Target hasn't been slowing down, not at all. You can actually pre-order MPM11 Ratchet right now! I didn't cover Ratchet in the reveals because his rather public reveal was definitely overshadowed by what came later in the week. He is priced at $119.99, but his buddy MPM10 Starscream still has no listing at all. Not only that, but listings with stock images have appeared for the Earthrise exclusive two-packs of the Clones and Seekers. You can't pre-order them just yet, but the release dates are coming soon, so make sure you're parking your browsers on those listings in order to not miss the 15-minute window while they're available and then sold out. Good luck! I'm seriously getting a little worried that MPM11 has a listing before MPM10, but uh, I guess that's just the Starscream guy in me. The boy's pheromone level suggests he wants to mate with the female. News on the streets of Asia forums is grim for Chinese toy company Weijiang. There have been a variety of reports that the company was raided by police and all of the owners have been arrested. It's hard to get any verifiable proof of this other than some poorly translated posts online, but the apparent story is that they were moving beyond transforming toys and starting to make their own versions of large Iron Man hot toys. With Hasbro and Disney working together to file a joint suit, it appears they were finally able to strike a blow against the ongoing battle against counterfeit products. So what does this mean for the future of third party? Probably not much. It seems that some items have already moved to different factories, and after the dust settles, we may just see all their upcoming figures sold under a new moniker or company name. There have been reports of raids on factories before, but everything still seems to find a way to get produced. Just ask your buddy Cell, who is set to release imminently. We will need more details to discern the validity of this story, but you can bet your butt I'll be following it closely. And that's a wrap. I'm just getting back into the swing of things, so forgive me if this episode felt a little cosmic rusty. Stuff happened so fast and frequently this week, it just wasn't easy to tie it all up with a nice little bow. Don't forget, COVID-19 is still out there. We haven't gotten out of the woods just yet, but hopefully there haven't been any major production delays for our favorite brands. Considering all the leaks we saw this week, Transformers is still alive and well and we should expect some sort of official reveal of a lot of upcoming product this or next month from Hasbro itself. Till then, keep your wheels greased, stay away from yeast, and stay tuned to TF Talk News for the inevitable feast. Mr. Starscream, out. Cream Mamma mia! The TF Talk Network exists due to the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans across North America and beyond. Check out our variety of shows like Microcasters, Ouch My Wallet, Cut the Tape, and our flagship show featuring a rotating all-star cast, TFYLP, which has been running for over 10 years. 
The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms at TFYLP. The TF Talk cast is on Discord. You can join us for free by typing bit.ly slash TF Talk Discord in the browser of your choice. Intro and outro score provided by Surrender. You can find Surrender at surrender-official.bandcamp.com. Directly support our shows and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations through Patreon are used to cover production and server expenses that keep our shows running and are not distributed to individual staff members. If you have any comments or feedback, you can directly email the show at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and we'd love to read some of your comments on the air. And if you've got a hot news tip, send it my way! Wow, Wheelie Riding Grimlock. What a fantastic piece of art, almost as if it was a shirt design. I mean, guys, I really didn't mean to put that on walmart.com. It was an accident, I promise. I won't do it again. Yes, Crimson.